With respect to our relationship to the universe, we are innately perfect. We are as much a part of this universe as are the moons of Jupiter or the rings of Saturn. Within us can be found the elements from faraway galaxies. Surely we walk a sacred path of interconnectedness. And we are very much at home on this earth without question. We belong. Envision that you are standing on the top of a high cliff. Your feet suddenly slip, and a stranger catches you at the last moment, saving you from certain death. Let's assume this process continues each moment for the next 30 or 40 years. Fairly quickly, you begin to take things for granted, fail to appreciate the stranger's goodwill. After a while, you may even become critical and resentful of that, how that bastard forgot to save me that last time. To be critical of our true nature is like judging a star for twinkling at irregular <laughs> intervals. Our hearts speak of an obligation to appreciate our aliveness and to live fully within each new moment as it unfolds. Our proper direction is toward the truth of who we are. Good morning. Since the last time I was here, my life has changed in many ways. I'm older now, 85 years young. I lost a child. Cancer claimed the life of my oldest son. I now have hearing aids because my wife got tired of me saying, what did you say? And with the help of a letter of recommendation from your own Doug Strong, I've been accepted into the spiritual director's program at SMU. Thank you. Being back in college at 85 has no bad, no small ordeal. <laughs> Among other things, I've had to learn to use Zoom and all those other related technologies that never existed the last time around. No doubt you've already noted that this reflection is about spirituality. I want to tell you some of what I've learned so that the word spirituality might have a little less, uh, be a little less intimidating and hopefully might even become useful in your life. To begin with, we should always define our terms. What does the word spirituality mean? It's interesting, I've purchased and read way too many books on spirituality, but very few of them have tried to be bold enough to provide a definition for the term. A few do. I have begun making a growing list of definitions of spirituality. Whenever I run across one, I record it, and they have literally been all over the map. Here are a few examples of some definitions of spirituality. One, spirituality is an amalgam of positive emotions that bind us to other human beings and to God as we understand him or her. Two, it is living our lives so that the divine can work through us. Three, it is a sense of connection to something greater than ourselves. Well, being a Unitarian, you might think that I was a little squeamish at the reference to God and the divine and all of that, and you'd be correct. The definitions, however, get a little better when they are offered with respect to religion. Here are a couple of such definitions. Four, 
While religion is a truth that is out there, being beyond what the world has to offer, spirituality is what is that which is found within what belongs to the world. Five. Religion involves sharing in and believing in another person's experience, but spirituality is the unfolding of one's own personal experience. I hope I've proved my point that the word spirituality has no good definition, at least not yet. Personally, I like that last usage of the word contrasted to religion. Religion is somebody else's experience. Spirituality is my own. And that brings us to another important question. What exactly is the relationship between spirituality and religion? I'm sure everyone here is aware that religion has a demographic problem, that it's on a major decline. This is particularly true for the Christian religion, but somewhat the case for all religions. Incidentally, Islam is about the only religion that is holding its own with respect to the overall increase in the general population. Two new books, The Great De-Churching by Jim Davis and Michael Graham, and a second book entitled Nonverts, The Making of Ex-Christian America, by Stephen Bovant, claim that nuns, that is, those who claim no church affiliation, began increasing around 1967, but they really took off in 1990 with a corresponding major decline in church attendance. And that pattern has pretty much continued every year since with a 2030 projected date of when the number of nuns will be equal to or more than Christian worshipers. There can be little doubt, sociologists tell us, that America is becoming a much more secular country. And that trend is predicted to continue even to increase into the future. The long-range projection is that while religion will never completely go away, America gradually will, in the not too far distant future, become a non-Christian country. So, how does spirituality <clears throat> fit into this picture of declining religion? You may have noticed that I titled this reflection Unitarian Universalist Spirituality. I really hate to disappoint you, but one of the most important things you need to hear this morning is that there is no such thing as Unitarian Universalist Spirituality. There's no Methodist Spirituality, no Lutheran Spirituality, and no Catholic spirituality. In fact, there isn't even any atheist or agnostic spirituality either. To those who seek to become spiritual directors, there is just spirituality and only spirituality. Why is that? Because to those who practice spirituality, our role is not to be religious or non-religious but to be compassionate listeners. We, perhaps I'm jumping too far ahead, I'm not a certified spiritual director yet. <laughs> we who wish to call ourselves spiritual directors seek primarily to give to others the gift of listening, of being heard. We seek to be more empty so that others those who need to can fill us with their thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. We do this because listening to others is how we share our contemplative, 
our spiritual lives together. It is connecting with another person at as deep a level as we humanly can. To me, one who listens is diametrically opposite one who evangelizes. That is, those who bring words, or even the word, usually meaning the good news. It is not religion that spirituality is interested in, but love. Because we believe that the gift of listening is healing, and healing is loving. And what the world needs now is as much healing as possible. Healing from confusion, healing from an overflow of words, healing from hate, healing from fake news, healing from frustration, healing from isolation and loneliness, healing from ignorance, and healing from the wounds of the past. And what others have noticed is that once upon a time, religion and spirituality were so conjoined that it was not possible to think of one without the other. It was the rabbis, the priests, and the ministers of religion who brought what spirituality they could to the masses. Something happened in the 1990, and religion started to decline. Sociologists speculate that it was the perfect storm composed of two major events. First, it was a backlash against the fundamentalism that began growing following America's Cold War with the Soviet Union. And second, and more significantly, it was the beginning of the internet. Those two events together began a great unwinding or unraveling of the tight relationship between religion and spirituality. Today, religion is the keeper of the dogmas, the rituals, the biblical and the mythical stories, the parables, and the theologies, in other words, the beliefs. Spirituality is less and less a part of that world. Instead, it wishes to bring love and healing regardless of what one believes. And that is why there can be no religious or non-religious spirituality. There is only spirituality. I want to tell you a bit more about spiritual directors. When we choose to go to a spiritual director, when one is troubled by questions, spiritual questions, or when one feels their spiritual concerns need to be expressed or explored with another person, like, why is there something rather than nothing? Or perhaps, what do you think? Is there really a God? Or maybe, do you suppose there's really life after death? Or, how can I figure out what my purpose in life is? A spiritual director will listen to those thoughts and feelings and may or may not express some of her or his own, but mainly will try to help you explore those questions. They may not be answered, but hopefully they might be better understood. A spiritual director is not a therapist, nor a medical doctor, and a spiritual director doesn't have all the answers, but they do care about those that have questions that eat at their souls if they actually have souls, and perhaps that too is another subject worth exploring. 
And I should tell you, I do not like the title spiritual director. I would prefer to be called a spiritual companion, for to be a companion suggests trust, friendship, and a lasting relationship. To find those who I could be companions with was really the reason I ultimately became a Unitarian Universalist minister in the first place. I would much prefer to discuss life over a beer than try to direct or correct or cure or save anyone. We are unlikely to find the answer, although we may find an answer. Still, we will likely smile, maybe even laugh, and really work at enjoying life in the process. So, in part, this reflection is an unabashed advertisement for myself. Typically, a spiritual director or companion would meet with you once a month. I have my own spiritual director, and I meet with her once a month. I know that the UUA is sponsoring a, a spiritual director program called Wellspring. Perhaps you might find that more convenient. Check it out. But if anyone here might be more interested in having a spiritual companion. I am, though not fully qualified yet, <laughs> hanging out my shingle. But my shingle probably would not be a very good match for everyone. Even though spiritual companions try to be open to all those who come to them, I do not believe I would make a very good spiritual companion to those who call themselves Christian or those who hold supernatural, paranormal, or mystical beliefs, mainly because of our language of the holy and the non-physical would likely be too great. And I suspect it would take too long to learn each other's language. Rather, I believe I could best be a companion to those who think of themselves as atheists, agnostics, scientists, pantheists, naturalists, humanists, and or Unitarian Universalists. <laughs> With those individuals, I speak a much more common spiritual language. If that's you, and you would like to find someone to explore those thoughts and feelings that trouble you, in the words of Leonard Cohen, I'm your man. <laughs> spiritual direction is helping others explore both the spiritual question and the spiritual needs in their lives. It is a seeking through listening to plumb the meaning of ourselves, our togetherness, and the world in which we live and die. It is about identifying ourselves as a never completed work in progress while always seeking the joy in being alive. Mm -hmm.